Harold Perkins Jr. has a torn ACL. His season is over. What does it mean for the LSU defense for the remainder of 2024? We're talking about it. It's bonus coverage of Locked on LSU. Let's go. You are Locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, let's get it. It is Locked on LSU, your team every day. I'm your host, Matt Moscona. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We're free, available wherever you get podcasts. So please subscribe either on podcast or on YouTube. Subscribe and uh, hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. Uh, The news that we feared after the game on Saturday against UCLA has been confirmed. Harold Perkins Jr. has a torn ACL. His season and possibly his career at LSU is over. We'll talk about his future here in just a few minutes. I do want to talk about um, how LSU might replace Harold Perkins, but I think we all know what transpired. We were watching the game uh, on Saturday Late in the second half, it was early in the fourth quarter, Harold Perkins Jr. on a third and 35, no less. Uh, Third and 35, came up, he collided with UCLA's Jalen Berger. It was a pass right in the middle of the field. Uh, Perkins went down. Initially, it looked like he grabbed his back. Um, He limped to the sideline. At that point, you sort of knew it was something more. Uh, put a towel over his head, went to the sideline. I went to the locker room. Uh, I was told after the game, we shared this with you on the previous episode here, that uh, what they feared was a torn ACL. Uh, as I've always put it, the three letters nobody wants to hear, but we all know what it means. Uh, something that can only be confirmed with imaging. And that's what happened on Sunday. They went and got the MRI done and confirmed Harold Perkins' torn ACL. So his 2024 season possibly His LSU career is over. I know there's a lot of conversation about Harold and the season he was having, but Brian Kelly said it best after the South Carolina game. Even though you may not see Harold Perkins stuffing the stat sheet the way he has in the past, his impact is felt in so many ways, and that's what LSU really is going to lack here. So, you know, as a freshman, Perkins played in 14 games, started eight. He had 13 TFLs, seven and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, and a pick. Last year as a sophomore, 75 tackles. That was up from 72. Same number of TFLs with 13, five and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, six passes defensed. He had an interception, a game-changing play against Missouri game where he also blocked a field goal. I know that's kind of the the MO here as fans talk about Harold Perkins. We saw that magnificent freshman season where... You know, he changed the game against Ole Miss. He changed the game against Arkansas. And we kept waiting for that a year ago. And the, the reality is he made so many spectacular plays. LSU's defense was so bad that they just were forgotten. And look, I was an outspoken opponent of Perkins moving inside to the off-ball linebacker spot this year. And it lasted one game a year ago. This year, they let him try it for two games. And it was just very clear that's not where he belongs. He belongs on the edge, bending the edge, rushing the passer, affecting the game in space. Because as we've seen, and this is confirmed with PFF, Harold Perkins' ability to tackle in space is just, it, it's not a strength of his. He's elite off the edge. He has elite athleticism. When you look at his tackling grades against UCLA, his tackling grade was a 28.4. Against South Carolina, it was 35.8. The first play of the game against South Carolina was that little dump pass to the tight end where Perkins missed the tackle. Look, in the in this game against UCLA, UCLA's last drive of the first half, um, on the reverse play that uh, after the 16 yard da- uh, play on first and they ran a reverse with the receiver that netted nine yards. Perkins had him dead to rights and couldn't break down and make the tackle in space. That's not his strength. Uh, and, you know, I think they had come to that realization and they were going to start using Harold Perkins in space more. And as a matter of fact, you saw um, Perkins in coverage more against UCLA. He had a 66.5 coverage grade by PFF, which was the highest coverage grade he had had so far this season in four games. Um, it's so disappointing. It's just so disappointing because you have this incredibly elite player that has has moved around so much defensively, trying to find his home And even in spite of not really finding a home, is it off ball? Is it as an edge rusher? Is it in that nickel Sam role? Is it star? Even still, the NFL looked at him and saw this 
elite guy off the edge and he's still in everybody's first round mock drafts. Well, that's going to change now. And that may change what Harold Perkins is, you know, moving forward. So, you know, when you look at, at the season Perkins had, it'll come to an end after just four games. And it's so disappointing in just four games, 17 total tackles, uh, just one and a half TFLs did not have a sack. He just struggled so far through four games through a you know, third of the season to impact the game the way he had in so many ways. Um, but for LSU, this is another crushing blow because as Brian Kelly said after the South Carolina game, is what I was alluding to, Perkins, even though he's not stuffing the stat sheet, impacts the game in so many ways because other teams, opponents, have to game plan for him. They have to know where he is on the field at all times because... He can be used in so many ways. He can use off the ball. He can drop in coverage. He can come as a as an, a blitz from the inside. He can come on a blitz on the edge. And so teams had to pl- plan for him and account for him. And with Harold Perkins no longer there for the remainder of the season, that is a massive loss for this defense, even if nothing more than something, a giant chess piece, queen piece on the chessboard that opponents had to prepare for. So how does LSU start to move on without Harold Perkins? I want to talk about that. We'll do it as we continue. Locked on LSU, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, Hey, FanDuel, if you're an NFL fan, uh, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So pull up the FanDuel app. Yeah, LSU play in South Alabama this week. If you got a good feeling on it, make that $5 bet, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's at FanDuel.com, FanDuel.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Game Time. I've really enjoyed telling you about Game Time. I downloaded the Game Time app. If you love to go to live events, it doesn't matter if it's sports, music, theater, comedy, Look, if you want to, if you were in the stadium, maybe in the shade this past weekend against UCLA, or you want to be there for South Alabama, you're looking ahead to Ole Miss or Alabama, whatever it may be, Oklahoma coming to Tiger Stadium, make sure you get those tickets at FanDuel. Some great opportunities. And one of the things that I love about FanDuel is the lowest price guarantee. At, excuse me, I said at FanDuel, forgive me, at game time. At game time, the lowest price guarantee, they guarantee you the lowest price for the tickets. And if not, They'll credit you 110% of the difference. Also, you get seat views, panoramic seat views from your seat in the app before you buy the ticket so you know exactly where your seats are. So here's what you do. You download the Game Time app. You create an account. You use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account. Redeem with the code Locked On College. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. So now that we know Harold Perkins is done for the season, the big question is, how does LSU start to replace him? And if there's one thing that maybe benefits LSU, it's that they have been able to manufacture a pass rush by being better than their opponent. Let me explain what I mean. A year ago, LSU had to get very creative with how they generated pressure. Maybe it was safety blitzes or corner blitzes or delayed blitzes from Harold Perkins. You weren't just winning one-on-ones to get pressure. The example I'll give is Arden Key. You didn't need to get creative. Arden Key had 12 sacks in his in his season in 2016. You could just put Arden Key on the edge. He was better than most everybody he went against, and he could get pressure for you. If you want to look at it from a different position, similarly, it was like Derek Stingley. You could put Derek Stingley on an island, and he was going to be better than most every receiver he faced. You didn't have to worry about numbers or rolling coverage or safety help. It was just like, Derek, you got him, and the locks down that guy. LSU didn't think they had that. Now, one of my contentions early in the season was that LSU, while they were thin on the interior, was going to be good on the edge. Not just good by comparison of what they were a year ago defensively, but like legitimately good, and we're seeing that so far. Y'all, Braden Swinson... um, and and Savion Jones have been fantastic so far. I don't know if you know this, but Braden Swinson so far through four games already has seven sacks. Seven sacks through four games. I just mentioned Arden Key's 12 back in 2016. 
That's the LSU single season record. So for Braden Swinson, that is very much in sight. LSU on the season already has a dozen sacks. That's an average of three a game. That's tied for 14th in college football. And by the way, the best in college football is Miami of Florida with 16 sacks. So you're not even that far off of that pace. And you've played much better competition than they have. So, you know, I think that's one way that LSU looks at replacing Harold Perkins. Just from a pass rush, a pressure standpoint, is when you've got Swinson and you've got Savion Jones, and then you've also got young, talented guys as well, like Gabe Relaford, Kalash Cobbins, Deshaun Womack. Look, you got pressure from the inside as well uh, this past weekend. Dominic McKinley, the true freshman five-star defensive tackle, came in in his first defensive series, got a sack. So if you're just thinking in terms of pressure, you have that sort of covered uh, because you've been able to generate pressure and havoc with your with your your front. And I think Blake Baker will be able to do that and be just fine in respect to generating pressure. The problem is, as we alluded to, accounting for Harold Perkins. Other teams don't have to account now for Harold Perkins. And before last week, Harold Perkins started taking reps at the star. They moved Major Burns back to safety. They moved Perkins at star. So what this means now with Perkins out for the year is Major Burns likely moves back to be your starter at the star position. And I thought, just to be frank, I thought Major Burns would do would fare much better uh, than he has so far in that spot this year. Um, if I look at uh, at Major Burns on the season, I'm trying to find the um, – forgive me, here it is. I'm trying to find Major Burns' PFF numbers on the season. Here you go. Um, just his overall defensive rate. Uh, against Southern Cal, 54.8, then a 60.8, 63.9, 58.5. Um, it actually, as I look at it, is it, hasn't been as bad as maybe it, it seems or would have seemed on its face. But uh, – Burns in that star role is probably what you'll see, and you'll continue to see a lot of those young guys at safety. Now, one you know, big concern is that this past week, when you look at the lowest-graded LSU players against UCLA, safety was a pretty common theme among the lowest-graded players. Defensively, it was your lowest-graded player defensively was J.K. Johnson, then Jordan Gilbert, Major Burns, Deshaun Spears, Say Dryan, four safeties. So you really struggled on the back end, and they've got to get better play at safety. And maybe it's getting some of those younger guys like Deshaun Spears, like Kylan Jackson. Maybe Javen Toviano gets more run. I will tell you, at the end of fall camp, we did see Javen Toviano running at star when they moved Juwan Johnson uh, more to that nickel role. And now Juwan Johnson's playing offense. So the, I guess the short answer is, you don't have one guy that's just going to replace Harold Perkins. What's going to happen is it's going to be a shuffling of roles Major Burns is going to move back to the star. You'll probably see Toviano get more run at star as well. And you're going to see even more of Sage Ryan, of uh, Deshaun Spears, Jordan Gilbert back at safety. And then maybe more Jire Brown uh, in the nickel role, playing that nickel back role. And maybe more P.J. Woodland as well. It basically just, it shuffles it shuffles Burns down, so it shuffles. So there's a domino effect that happens now with Harold Perkins being out. Look, Brian Kelly will meet with reporters on Monday, and no doubt he'll address this. The other real gigantic question is whether or not Harold Perkins is done at LSU. He was a projected first-round pick, and we all made the assumption that Harold Perkins was going to be gone this year uh, after the season to the NFL, and he may still well be. If there is a benefit for Harold Perkins, it's that this injury happened early in the season. So by the time you get to combine, pro day, et cetera, I, I don't know that Perkins will be 100%, but he'll be closer, certainly, Um than if this injury, say, had happened in the bowl game like he did with Logan Diggs a year ago or John Emery, you know, John Emery last year, uh, you know, John Emery had that injury in, uh, you know, in um, uh, November against Florida. So, um, you know, I think uh, that it happened early might allow Emery to go through, to have a surgery, to go through rehab and to get get ready uh, for or scouts and show what what that may be, but no doubt this is going to cost him. And ACL isn't now what it was and what it has been in the past, but it it's certainly it's certainly going to hurt. Um, you know, there have been interesting in instances of players who tear ACLs and what happens. You know, Jake Butt was a great tight end from Michigan who tore his ACL in the Orange Bowl, went undrafted. Um, 
you know, Jalen Smith would have been a top 10 pick. He uh, had a devastating uh, injury in the Fiesta Bowl for Notre Dame, ended up going early in round two, and Dallas effectively gave him an entire redshirt year, his rookie year, and then ramped him up, and he ended up, in, ended up having a good run in Dallas. There's always the possibility that Perkins could return, and maybe NIL could do enough for Harold Perkins where it would make sense for him to return, rehab, and try to increase his stock. But most likely what happens is Harold Perkins tries to rehab and gets ready for the draft and stays the course. But we'll continue to follow that as it goes along. But for LSU, John Emery torn ACL. Jacoby and Guillory ruptured Achilles. Now Harold Perkins torn ACL. These season-ending injuries for impact players, not just impact players, but veteran players as well. Just devastating for this team that is already thin on depth, is trying to rebuild the defensive side of the ball, and now you're losing your, your veteran players. I told you this when Jacoby and Guillory ruptured his Achilles. Uh, we did a station survey at 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge before the season, and all of us were asked who was the most indispensable player on the entire team. Now, Garrett Nussmeyer is the answer to that question. We all know that. But if you move beyond Garrett, my answer was Jacoby and Guillory because you didn't have another veteran, experienced interior defensive lineman, and that is hurt. But there were a handful of people on our station staff who said Harold Perkins. So now... Maybe the two most indispensable players that you had defensively are lost for the year. Steve Braden Swinson and Savion Jones can pick up the slack uh, on the edge. Maybe Deshaun Womack, Gabe Relaford can get them some pressure as well. And we could still continue to see some of these young guys grow and develop in that secondary because that's about the only path that LSU has forward here to try to make this defense respectable as you go through the meat of the schedule in October. But Boy, just a devastating, a devastating injury for a guy who we all saw just splash onto the scene as a freshman, play on a play, play a very impactful role on a bad defense that went unnoticed because the defense was so bad a year ago. And now in his junior season, wearing the number seven jersey, going to SEC Media Days, projected first round pick to have this happen. It is just absolutely gutting. We wish the best for Harold Perkins, and no doubt we'll continue to follow it to see how LSU moves on. If there's a if there is a a a silver lining for the season. It's that it happened early enough and before a game where you're going to play South Alabama. So you can go try to roll some guys out there and get them more reps, more attempts before you go into the open date and have two weeks to get ready for Ole Miss. And then the grind that's going to come ahead in October. We'll be here for all of it. We're glad you are as well. Hey, if you're on podcast, please uh, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Rate us, leave a review. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let a friend know if they love the Tigers. We got you here every single day for Locked on LSU, your team every day.